Hello and welcome back to How to Connect with Humans. This is Series 3, Episode 7. Seven. And this is the beginning of 2021. Hello, Wayne. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. So it's the new year. Yeah. Everything has changed. Absolutely. E everything is different. Well, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> the background, the, you know, we, we, we did a few changes and, and we like the feeling of the new year. And it, I think it brings like um, nice, fresh thinking of what can we do on a on a wide canvas. Um, so uh, to help us talk about that, we have a fantastic guest tonight. Absolutely. Somebody we both have a great connection with. Uh, and I think our first uh, connection was smiles and, um, and this warm feeling of feeling welcome every time we went to the, the three uh, principles conference in London and um work welcome but this lovely person we have here today julian fraser um and uh just to let you know a little bit about julian so 12 years ago um wells helping to build a better world uh better world charity just a charity in the uk julian came across the three principles um and it changed his life so over the years he's helped uh Better World become established as an international focus for sharing this understanding through helping to build the Life 2.0 conference with 1,000 annual attendees. And it's now the biggest principles event in the world. And we have been there and it's absolutely, I've got goosebumps because when we are in the room, it's incredible and it's run, the conference is run in this big stadium in, in in the room and then in different rooms and also online and this past year and julian may have something to say about that they have to come to the position of running it uh, online and that was uh, uh it was magnificent the work that you guys did to make that happen was absolutely incredible um so julian has been, experienced many personal insights along the way Clearly seeing that by stepping out uh, of his own way, life becomes smoother, effortless and more joyful and a more joyful experience. He has changed from an angry bear with a sore head, we sometimes know what that feels like, into a person who enjoys life with a smile on his face. And we can really tell that that's Julian. Um, and Julian has also transformed physically, so he may want to tell us a little bit about that. Proof that a shift in our internal world and our belief system lead to sometimes profound external change. Julian is the director of the 3P UK Life 2.0 conference, a consultant at Better World and has recently started two new projects. Uh, Julian graduated from one of One Thought Institute in 2011 and has been a practitioner for several years. So with the title of New Year, New Adventures, welcome uh, to our series, Julian. It's so lovely to have you. Hello, Carolina. Hello, Wayne. Thank you for having me. Thank you very, very much. Um, I... I I, I guess I'll, I'll kind of get underway. I didn't realise that the bio, I kind of thought it was like a, just like a, a guide rather than it was going to be read out. And again, I apologise for my squeaky chair. Um, but I mean, there's a lot to say about that title. When you, when we kind of discuss what we we're going to talk about tonight, um, I did, I did like that title, you know, New Year, New, new Adventures. Um, the, the, I guess, there's, there is lots to talk about and I, I kind of wind the clock back. We're just starting 2021. Um, and, you know, like for anyone who, who might not be aware, I was watching this from abroad. So the UK has just entered yet, uh, I think the third lockdown. Um, and this one is, you know, you know pretty, pretty uh, uh, um, comprehensive. Let's put it like that. Um, and so we're all stuck at home. You know, and and in in my in my mind, it kind of it, it fits perfectly with what what we're going to talk about, or what I was wanted to share with people anyway, 
was because that was when the, you know we went into this first lockdown in in March um, last year. So, um, as you mentioned, you know I have been working at you know the Better World charity for you know something like you know 12 to 15 years. That's probably a little bit out of date. I didn't change the years, but it's about 15 years now. Um, and uh, it was it was great. I, you know, I, I, you know, working in a charity, trying to help people, you know, working on projects for the, for the, you know, the better good uh, for charitable aims um, and, you know, being successful. The Three Principles Conference was a big part of that, you know, every year, um, you know, as, as you said, Carolina, you know, we, we've run this physical in person, you have to say that these days, but in person event. Um, you know, at uh, in Hendon in London, um, and it grew. You know, f over those 10, 12 years, I think this is the twelfth year now. So it grew grew over that time from one hundred and twenty, thirty people in our you know centre, as it was then in in Temple Fortune, to you know over a thousand people for the last you know two, three years, something like that, um, from all over the world. You know, um, people from virtually every time zone, um, you know, would come. And it still amazes me. I, I love standing in the reception area when, you know, it's too late to kind of do any last minute changes and just greeting people and finding out where they're from and how far they've come. And people would come from like the other side of the planet, which is mind blowing. Um, just to, you know, kind of make a, a trip out of coming to the UK for, you know, this event, um, which, I mean, as you say, it's a very special experience. And, you know, I recommend everyone to come this year. Um, um, just a little plug for that. Um, so, you know, in March last year, you know, the coronavirus had, you know, been happening. Um, and we entered into another lockdown and um, so along with my fellow co-organizers of Shao Rosenblatt and, and Aaron Turner um, so we decided to, to kind of put the conference on as a as a virtual event um, and it was it was due for J June you know we'd already sold a couple of hundred probably maybe yeah maybe a little more than 200 tickets already I think you've both bought your tickets already. Um, and um, it was all a bit like, well, we don't know what to do, how to do it. Obviously, we weren't going to sell any more in-person conference tickets. And there wasn't really anything going on in the world kind of as kind of like, now what do we do? You know, it was in those kind of first few months that everyone got accustomed to kind of spending their life staring at a screen and working online and using Zoom and all those types of things. But at that time, kind of trying to put on the conference in, uh, what was it, you know, maybe eight weeks um, and, you know, kind of do something that was meaningful and helpful um, to people in terms of sharing, the, you know, the three principles and, and you know, that understanding, it was, it was, it was quite an interesting task. Um, my initial reaction for most of these things is often no, I can't do that. But um, I, I, that, that's kind of like I, I, Shao and and Aaron, as well as myself, are now well used to uh, adjusting for that. And so after I've kind of like settled down, I'm like, okay, now let's see where we can go with this. So as you said, we you know we created uh, an event online fully virtual um, and we ended up with 1300 you know people signed up to come to it which was amazing um, it was the biggest event that we've done in terms of speakers in terms of sessions um, and it had the most amazing feeling to the whole thing which shocked me as much as anyone else I guess looking back it's very easy to kind of say well you know of course it would but at the time I don't think anyone really um, really thought that we could achieve something like that on, online. Um, uh, certainly of, a, of a, an equivalency to, to the in-person event. Um, 
And, you know, that was that, you know, it was, it was, it was wonderful. It was great. And out of that, I started to realize something different. I started to see something different. And I think this is where, you know, this is what I want to talk about this evening, kind of like new adventures. So, so I, <clears throat> two things, I guess, and I'm thinking as I'm going here, this isn't a pre-prepared kind of speech, you know, but I, I realized that, um, where I was at with my, you know, working life was, was in some way, you know, limiting and unfulfilling. Um, and there was a lot of potential to do something different or as well as, I don't want to say move away because I didn't want to, but I want, you know, I didn't want to move away from what I was doing, some aspects of what I was doing but I felt like there was, there was, there was room for me to do something different. Let's, let's say it like that. There was room for me to do something different. And I felt that, and look, I look back on kind of where I was at, because obviously, you know, we were still in lockdown um, come, come June, beginning of June. And I'd come to the realization and come to the understanding that, there was a great opportunity here for me to do something different. Like, in a way, I felt like I couldn't go any further in certain aspects of what I was doing, in certain parts of that role, in parts of that job. And so I didn't know what else that meant at that stage. I didn't have some grandiose idea to go and do something different. Um, um, but I realized that I wanted to create more space to change. And so I guess I'm going to say it in a, in a, in a kind of like, here's what happened and then kind of like switch back to kind of like what I saw and kind of what was running on in the background. But so I sat with Shao and I sort of, you know, kind of explained to him that I didn't want to carry on in the way that I had up until then. And I wanted to change some things around and create more space. And he was very happy and very welcoming. One of the things that I wanted to carry on with was the confidence and, and kind of keep that growing. But I also wanted, and I, I recognized that I didn't want to do certain of the other things that I was still doing. Um, and I, I think I recognized that I didn't have to do that anymore. In other words, so, so um, my, my, as you kind of said in my, my bio, like I, I was always this kind of uh, bear with the soul head. I was a very much like a, a, I think it's what people call type A, but I don't know exactly. So I'm going to say it's type A and just we can all go along with that. So um, I was this type A personality um, where I was very, um, you know, kind of uh, detailed and, you know, kind of on top of everything. That's how my, my upbringing was. And it was very different from the understanding that I have now or that I grew to learn from an appreciation and understanding of the principles. That being that, you know, a, a broader view and kind of just following a good feeling and kind of listening to, you know, the, the more wise voices, let's call it in my head, was, was actually a more, um, well, was a, was a, uh, I don't want to say, was just the right way to live. Let's put it like that, okay? And so I could see that there were certain things that I felt limited by, that I felt like I had some restrictions with and that I wanted to change. Um, and so when I looked at that, I saw that there were, that there was, there was plenty of opportunity. It was kind of like now I've created or I can, I can see that I can create that space. I, I could see that there was, there was too, you know, there was certainly something that I could do with that. And, and that looked to me like, well, first and foremost, you know, um, there were two things, one of which was um, taking what I had learned over creating the, you know, the conference 
online and doing that whole as a digital thing and and turning that into a a I don't want to say turning it into a business because that's not what it, what this was about it was it was really I've learned some information I've learned how to do something which I think is going to be of value and helpful to other people looking to do the same thing you know I know my skill set is I'm quite technically minded quite technically capable I see how things work I like learning new things so kind of uh, part of the conference experience uh, building that virtual event was kind of ex looking at all of the production elements the website the, the video conferencing putting that all together and bringing that all together in a way that was um was i guess uh you know a good experience for for the end user and so so i could see that that was something that was going to be a value to people because I kind of thought, well, it's been not so, again, I'm just telling you how I see it. It wasn't such an easy thing for me to do. And if it isn't so easy for me, then I can see that there's going to be plenty of people out there who are going to, who are going to need help and support with that. And so out of that realization, insight, whatever you want to call it, just kind of like feeling, I think more importantly, I, I, spoke to and sat with Ben, my um, my event manager at the Three Principles Conference for the last five years or so, a good friend of mine. And I said, look, I think we can offer this to other people. So so we started working on it, you know, and, and um, we started building from there. And it was very clear that this now had a different energy. It had a different feeling that was that was, you know, kind of moving in the right direction. The other thing that I started with equally the same, uh, I guess, potential and, and, uh, and is still, you know, kind of moving in that direction was, was another idea with, um, with Claire Shoots. So one of the things that I, I have, you know, been, uh, I've experienced in my own life. And I guess, I guess this is a theme. It's kind of like, this is just how it works for me. So, so, um, uh, for, for those people that don't know, like my, my, my eldest daughter, I have five children, so my eldest daughter, she's 17, so she has uh, cerebral palsy, she's, uh, she's quite severely affected by cerebral palsy, um, she, uh, she, you know, she's, you know, she's in a wheelchair, she has waking care, she can't speak, um, I have got a son with autism and ADHD, and so um, just in, you know, our community, I come across a large number of parents of children, you know, who are, you know, who are struggling with, you know, just who are struggling with their children who, who, who are disabled. Um, and when, when I look at that from, you know, my understanding of the principles and how I've grown from that perspective, I, I feel like there's a lot of um, there's a lot of help that can be given to people um, to just live well, life in a in a more um, yeah with more balance and more 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 good feeling and, and well being. Let's put it like that. So um, I, it's something that I've tried to oh, I've thought about for for many years. And I again I was speaking with my good friend Claire Shoots about it. That's my children. Now yeah, we're in lockdown. Can you hear them? They're calling in the house. Um, so, um, so I've been talking about it with, with Claire Shoots and sh we both felt like let's create something to help parents. Let's, let's create something to help parents who, who children have, you know, whose children's, who, who have children with disabilities. Let's call it like that. And so we started from there again with this, I guess, I want to say kind of good feeling, but then I don't want to kind of give it too much form also that it's like, I've got to feel this energy. It's like, it's more that I could see that there was a potential here. I could feel that there was a potential, um, that it had more freedom. It, it just felt like there's something that I can create here in this space that can be of help and of benefit to people. 
And so, you know, we've created a nonprofit um, and we are working towards, you know, creating an online portal and, a, and, a, and, a, and being of service to people, you know, as best we can. And we're, we're taking it from there. Um, so I guess I, I, that, that's the kind of the, 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 the kind of the overview of kind of what happened. And, and I guess the, the, the message I, I just wanted to share with people was really about seeing that you have more capability than you previously had. It's quite interesting because when I look back now from this position in, in time and the experience, let's say, so I can see that good friends of mine have said to me previously, like you, you know, where you are at, let's say work-wise is quite limiting. You know, they could see, Julian, you have this potential and you're not fulfilling that potential in what you're doing. And I always felt like, okay, fine, but I don't, I didn't feel it. I didn't see it. It wasn't, it wasn't visible. Um, and I didn't, I don't actually think that that was true. Like I, I, at the time it didn't feel like it was true. I'm not sure even if at that point it wasn't, it wasn't the right time or it wasn't ready or, or whatever, but it was just, I, I, I felt like it was the right thing to do. And at some point, like I said, last year, lockdown happened this, you know, the conference, all of that, that experience just raised some questions in my mind, points in my mind, which allowed me to, to see life differently. You know, new, new thinking and a new feeling emerged from that space that helped me see that there was a new potential. And I think that's, you know, kind of what I would, what I would ask people to, to, to look at, I guess, in their own lives, because very often people do feel limited. They do feel restricted. They don't know where to go, how to, to be or, or what to do. And, and they, they, you know, they are limited by their own experience. They are limited by their own feelings. It's interesting. We were speaking before everyone came in just about, um, you know, the lockdown and and how, um, you know, I'm going to say it slightly differently now, but but I can see there's a lot of people struggling with the idea and the concept of being locked, you know, locked up. You know, the word lock up, lockdown. You know, again, it kind of makes it feel very restricting. You know, it's like the words themselves, the form of it. You know, feels like it's it's very. Uh, you know. I'm, I'm limited, right? Um, but that's, it's, it's words, it's a form. It's not, it's not reality or real reality, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's, that's just the way that we are seeing it. Um, you know, when last week, that uh, a week and a half ago now, you know, kind of, there was going to be a lockdown over Christmas, there wasn't. And then as soon as there wasn't, people kind of, struggled, you know, massively, you know. Um, I'm blessed to say that I have learned, not, or I've seen that, that it's not even just being able to adapt, it's just seeing that when you struggle with reality, that's a result of your own um, thinking about it and, and a particular perspective in time. It's, and, and that, thinking the ability to think again and the ability to see again and the ability to kind of entertain fresh thought and see new possibilities is available to everyone at all times. And I've, you know, I say that, you know, kind of, you know, that that was me too, you know, like, like 15 years ago, as I said, you know, as, as I said, like certainly around the birth of my daughter, you know, it's quite interesting. I've been thinking about that today, but like 15 years ago, 17 years ago now, but like I was, I was, I was also restricted by my own thinking about that and the future and what's going to be and why, why isn't life turning out the way that I 
want it to be? Um, why isn't the life matching? Why isn't life matching my expectations? Um, and being able to see that that was just a perspective on life that was limiting my opportunities was a real blessing. And so being able to think again and see that again has changed my life. And I guess that was this, that it, I could even maybe at a push say that was the, the start of this, you know, like had I not been able to see new possibilities and new options, you know, come March of last year, you know, like I said at the beginning, my original um, perspective was, you know, no, we can't do that, right? No, this is, this is how I want it to be, right? But as I settle down now, I see new possibilities. Okay, well, yeah, we can try that and see what goes. We can try this out. And again, just kind of being open, you don't know where it's going to go. So um, it's a real blessing to be able to do that. And from that, that's when magic happens and, and you know, life changes and possibilities become realities, you know? And so, you know, our, you know, new uh, virtual event management, you know, kind of project has become a business and, and, you know, is, you know, we've produced many events and, you know, it's 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 really happening and again it feels it still has that energy you know one of the things that i wanted to to do with that was having this kind of like freedom to create and freedom to kind of explore and freedom to just try new things and and not be restricted by my own my own thinking about it my own feelings about it um and i and i'm pleased to say that that's happened with both these things you know with both these projects Look, I, I think that's uh, that's a good place to stop. I don't I don't know how the you know the podcast normally works, but I'm feeling like that's a good place to kind of like open it up for more conversation. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, I I love everything you said. It's it's incredible. And for people that don't know, I've worked closely with Julian over the last three or four weeks within the three P conference. And I've seen more recently exactly what you've just described. There's times where you've things have been said to you um, with, say, one of the websites, and you were kind of like, well, no, we could do it this way. And then kind of working out, you know, is it better, is it not? And the way, what I saw, the way you just kind of dealt with that, was incredible and it, it for me is just so powerful I remember when I worked with you I think a week and a half ago on an event you said to me you were like normally I'd be like in my head and everything like that and for me you weren't you were really calm and everything <laughs> It's quite funny when I, I like that thing in my bio about like being a bear with a sore head. Yeah. Like I don't I don't know when you first came to the conference, but I think it was like the second or third conference. So I I came on the main stage as like you know kind of one of these. I was the foot you know the panel telling their story because that was my my life was angry Julian. Like that's what I was very kind of like details. Things have to go my way, and if they're not going to go my way, then you know. It, you know, it used to be very much my way or the highway. And it was painful and also incredibly limiting. And that was my first big insight change through the principles that I realized that I don't have all the answers. And that even if I did, maybe there's, there's better ways of doing things, you know, um, putting even aside the fact that, that, um, life isn't enjoyable like that either. You know, it's not much fun being being uh, stressed and angry, but that really was what I was like. Like I, and, and you know, Shao always tells people, you know, that that was the biggest change. Cause I used to, I used to, you know, live at a very different level of tension, feeling, you know, just happiness with the world. I was not happy for, 
you know, many years. I was very, I was very stressed. I was very stressed. Um, and seeing a new possibility for that was very liberal, was massively liberating, massively. So. What I love about the, the two things you are saying and because it's so close to a heart as well, um, Wayne for me has been one of my most important teachers in my life. Um, and uh, for the people who are seeing this for the first time, um, Wayne has several policy. But um, <laughs> when I met him, I, I sort of didn't see his several policy. I just saw Wayne. And uh, he came through the door and was like, oh my God, I love him. I didn't know how I love him or what was it going to be. Or, but there was this sense of... Uh, connection and we sat down and we started talking and um as as we were talking I was like oh oh so I I see so because what seems uh, you know in in your body as a as a it, it is a disability for you to walk around and um so because you can see that in, in, in your body. Uh, you, you can't see what I perceive as a disability. You can't see what I perceive as, well, no, I can't do that because I'm not good enough, I'm not capable, or I don't deserve to be loved enough for that reason, or you know all the reasons you're gonna tell yourself that they look very concrete physically, um, or that, uh, he, he wasn't uh, worth of choosing, or that's what he felt, choosing who, who he could be with. It's, it was a feeling of like, well, he just had to wait and be chosen and, and take that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it made me really curious why was that like that, and then realized that in a way I felt the same. Um, and I had in a way, other reasons probably to pin it on than some disability. So what I love is this idea that in a time where we feel that things have been disabled for us, like being a social uh, uh, environment with other people or having to stay at home, uh, our jobs, uh, where things look disabled, what is there that is um, available? Yeah, that is able. That is abling, and that's what I hear you saying. Like when you see beyond that, yeah. when you see uh, that uh, that flow of energy that is behind everything when you're not limited about your disabling thinking, which is that what we all really have at the end. Um, so um, should we open it up to see if anybody has a question? Would you like to do that? Mm -hmm. Or you can share something, um, please feel free. Okay, so you can unmute yourselves now whenever yeah. you feel like it. Okay, I'll be 30 seconds. I'm sorry, Caroline. Hi, can I say something, Caroline? Sorry. Absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Julian. Lovely to Hi, see Sophia. you. Good Hi, Good to see you. I just wanted to say, um, I, I'm busy with my daughter, sorry, so I wasn't able to catch the full conversation. Um, but I loved the fact when you talked about it, what I heard was that you can have a fresh thought any moment. We don't have to be limited by the so-called lockdown, you know? It's, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, and I can't even remember what I saw really, I was in the kitchen, but it's, <coughs> it's just stayed with me. So I just wanted to say, yeah, I loved 
it's just hearing oh my gosh it's all you know every moment is a new moment you know and and in a way I thought oh my gosh that's what I've experienced today yesterday I was like oh my gosh homeschooling for three children blah 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 this that you know and it was like I need three iPads I've only got two and I was like eh, you know yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. This, and then this morning on some level I had a fresh thought in the morning you know lying in bed and I can't even say when it happened but it happened at some point in the early hours of the morning and something in me decided I'm just going to do my best doesn't matter if I can't do seven subjects with each child I'm just going to do what I can. And that was it. And then yeah. I just carried on with the day. And and <laughs> I've done exactly the same or slightly less than yesterday, but it was just a whole different experience. I wasn't an ogre around the family. <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> Perfect. Thank That's exactly you. it. That's exactly, That's exactly what we're talking about. You know, yeah. so you, you didn't miss anything, Sabia. You you caught the 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 essence of it, and you know, kind of demonstrated it perfectly. That's exactly what what I was trying to point to. Like it's the same this lockdown as the last lockdown, and I know everyone's getting exhausted in theory, or you know, it feels like in practice. But you know, everyone is getting exhausted by it. when's it going <laughs> to end. Um, you know how long is this going to go on for but that's the point it's 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 all about how we see it you know like if you feel restricted and hopeless by like you say the experience and i know it you know here's a list of all the things that you have to now do for your children and if you don't you you know the feeling is you're you are you are you are not meeting the expectations of X, Y, Z, or, or the school or yourself, you're letting everyone down. Again, it's all, it's all a creation of the mind, you know, that there is a fresh experience available to us every moment. And, and you know, you manage to see enough of a gap in, in life to kind of get a new feeling, follow a new thought and have that experience, like I'll do my best. And your best is not just okay not just um it's just showing up in life and doing what makes sense to you you know it's like it's it's perfect yeah and i did about five six subjects with each one of them <laughs> it was really nice <laughs> thank Great. you now it's bedtime so i'm just going to be listening in the background <laughs> okay, okay. So enjoy <laughs> bed sophie thank you sophia oh we love you um yeah my eyebrows are turning <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was curious about the 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 designer how how do you did these online help tools, uh, Julian, what, what's, how do, how could you give an example how it works? What do you mean specifically, well, like in more detail? Yeah, a bit more detail about it. Just help me though, when you say online, like, what do you mean? Like the process or just kind of what happened? What is it you're offering seen from the reception? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess, look, I mean, if in fact what we are offering is like a management service for producing virtual events. So doing anything like a conference. So we've done, I don't, I don't know, four or five conferences since, since June, you know? Um, so we produce and put on a conference in the same way that we did the 3P conference using different tools you know, um, than we did for the one in June. Um, um, you know, uh, but our, our, our kind of, I guess our role is really to help people, um, help people, and I wanna say this in the right way, I'm thinking of it, but it, again, you can hear, I'm not a polished salesperson by any means, but it, it, it's like people have an idea of an event they wanna create, 
So they might have a conference, they might have a retirement party, they might have a, um, you know, education that they want to get put over to people, whatever it is, there's lots of different things that people want to <coughs> Want to, want to kind of give over and, and offer to people. And doing that is sometimes outside of, you know, and well, for the people that we're seeing, it's outside of their skill set or their remit, or it just feels a bit too complicated. And so we come in and help people realize their ideas, realize what they want to create. And in other words, bring it to life. Um, and, you, you know, we, we you know, it's funny because the first few weeks of lockdown um, um, after the conference, one of the other things that I did was, pardon me, was just, um, I, I kind of looked at the platform that the conference had used and felt like, well, that's a bit out of the budget of most people. Um, there's a backstory to this in that we ended up getting it in like a very small window for a bargain price. OK, um, which we couldn't have afforded and would have up that price of everyone's ticket by, you know, p potentially, you know, a hundred pounds had we not got it in that window. But that's, you know, the wisdom of the universe kind of helping us out. Um, and um, so I looked at that and I was like, well, you know, how does how would anyone without that window kind of produce an event, a small event for people? It's just it's just impossible. So I set about creating, again, just playing around, following this good feeling, let's yeah. call it that, following this good feeling of creating a platform, uh, like a website platform that could help people put on, you know, these types of events in this type of way. And so we've ended up kind of using that um, from just playing around with it, just experimenting, um, with an online kind of, uh, you know, world building platform. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've created, I created like a, a conference template, as it were, yeah, you yeah. know, but not at that point, not thinking I can do anything with it, but just, you know, more than anything, just uh, experimenting and just seeing if it was possible, you know, challenging myself to it. Um, and it, you know, and it, it it came about. So we, so we will meet with people. We'll, you know, we'll we'll find we have a client or a potential client, and I'm just going to keep talking over her. But she's off. They're obviously they're ferreting for food, um, and um, we will we'll we'll kind of talk to them about what they want to create, and we will then. Um, you know, come back with a, you know, a proposal idea. I'm always looking at like new software online and new platforms and new things that, that might be helpful to people. Um, because again, I'm looking at it from, I guess that I like to, I like to think this anyway, um, being of service to people and helping people rather than, um, you know, making money and running a business rightly or wrongly that's that's that that i feel is not just the right thing to do but it's actually successful you know it is it it help, it, it it serves people yeah people you know people you know like that unsurprisingly so that's that's what we do i hope that answered your question oh yeah yeah it's just a, it, I, well about 10 years ago or something like that i worked in the it business for and we had some software called Interwise, which was from Israel, um, which was so expensive. You, you, so it, it was basically like Zoom. Right. Kind of in the beginning. So that was a great step forward. Uh, having a stable connection and stuff that was really, uh, that was new at the time. And um, so, so, uh, so, so, for a period, I, I had this job uh, also making different, uh, you know, building kind of like if a school wanted an in, in, internal uh, system for communication and teaching and stuff, you could, you so I, I had a, a bit of, the, you know, just some experiences with that for years back. Yeah. And I, and I, I just thought because of the, the, today I would, I would, I would uh, certainly 
uh, link it up on some kind on mobile devices. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess you fought that too. I mean, all of these things are, uh, you know, they are, there are lots of different considerations with it, what everyone is trying to do. I mean, look, the, you know, I guess the point here to, today and just maybe to kind of just bring it, circle it back to kind of like the subject is like that we're all, we're all subject to our own experience in the moment, our own thinking in the moment. And the only thing getting in the way of that is, is you and your relationship to your thinking. Yeah. Um, and anything is really possible. And as you know, Caroline was saying, like we limit ourselves um, and, you know, just because lockdown's here, just because I've always done the same job that I've always done, like there's whatever it is, you know, just because I'm in this situation and I, and I you know, feel and it looks like I, I can't, you know, do anything about it, um, that is a limiting self-belief, a limiting thought that is getting in the way of what, of what, of what we, you know, of what we can, of our, of our real potential. And, um, you know, over the last six months and now going into, the, you know, this new lockdown, it's like there's, there's, there's a real potential here. People have, you know, more time, and more ability. Um, yes, you know, uh, we have to, you know, we've got certain responsibilities as always, but that potential is always there. Um, and, you know, think again, look for something new, um, try something different. Um, look for that potential. Um, just explore and enjoy, I think, is, is the main thing. This is, in fact, a, a product of the lockdown. We, we got together, we were in a world, we want to do something, we want to do something. And suddenly we found that we had the time um, to do it, we have the space, and we said, well, we'll do something, even if it's just to talk with Jan and Chip, Chip and, and, you know, and we start something going. And um, so that's how To Connect With Humans started. And then it, 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 it decided it was gonna be a series, you know. Um, yeah. And um, so, Yeah, and, and and we for my for my in my own experience this this time the first month I was like in a re so I was surprised that I was in in a nice feeling on the first one going like we're gonna be okay and look you know there's just things to do we can create things. And by the end of this year, the exhaustion you were talking about, Julia, which I, I love, this is like, it was like, oh, I'm now exhausted of this. <laughs> sort of like looking at everything in sort of a positive side, I'm exhausted, I want now, you know, that's it. I run out of understanding, which is not possible, but that, that's what my relationship to, to thinking started being, well, Wayne, was I was really calm yeah. on the first one. <laughs> on the first one, I was I was the opposite to you. I, I was I was kind of freaking out on on the first one, going, "Oh, I'm not going to be able to survive and all this." And then the last two, I've been like, oh, it'll be fine, whatever." It's all fine. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> when did we switch? <laughs> So Has someone's raised their hand, Susie? Yeah. Yeah, Susie. Sorry, I thought you. Oh, that's okay. No, don't worry. No, it was just hello, hi. Hi. <laughs> it was just more um, of an observation, really. Listening to you talking, it was just just a really good reminder about sort of creativity and and creating things. It's it, it's really about being really okay about not knowing, isn't it? You know. It, mm -hmm. it, in the moment of just yeah not 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 knowing being okay with not knowing what how you're gonna manage something or how it's gonna work out and 
being okay if you're not seeing it and just trusting that you will see it when, when you need to and you'll have the answers. You know, and if you still don't think you have the answers or if you have to make a big decision, well, then you'll know enough to make a reasonable decision, you know, and then it'll go off on another way. Or I don't know, I yeah. just, I've missed, I've missed that energy a bit recently and it's really lovely hearing it again. <laughs> it's lovely hearing it from you as well, I have to say. No, but that's exactly it, exactly it. And sometimes it emerges into something and creates and, and you know, establishes itself and sometimes it doesn't and that's fine as well. Like that's part yeah. of the process, you know? Yeah, yeah, but it is, it is, it is play, right? It is, it is, it is playing, isn't it? And, and just, just being open to whatever comes up and if nothing comes up, well, that's okay too, you know, just, it will at some point. Yeah. Like this idea with Claire about uh, that I said about started this kind of like um, this nonprofit, you know, to help parents of disabled children. So I've been talking about it for three years, like, um, and it's been, it comes in waves, and now it's finally kind of emerging into something. Mm. But now is its time, you know. Now it feels more, more. I don't know how to, to say it, but more rights to, to kind of, and more, more you know, it, it's, it's establishing itself and growing and taking hold and taking root now, even though this is something that I was talking about three years ago and yeah. you could see that there was potential for it. I just didn't have a, a, a vision of, or an idea or a feeling about creating with that. Yeah. And again, like it, it may, come to something it may establish more it may not it may we'll see i don't know there is no there is no you know kind of 10 year plan five year plan you know for either of these things like again if the lockdown finishes and we all who knows where we'll go back who knows what the world will look like next week let alone uh, in three months time yeah yeah but it is it is trusting that that yeah, you'll be directed one way. I mean, I mean, even even down to uh, even down to you know, lockdown and having to do kids' lunches, you know. I mean, something like that. Just I, I just got completely overwhelmed. But I was like, oh god, <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> the monotony of, of of the supposed monotony of of having to do that again every day. You know, obviously juggling with work and just like the lunch. I, I've just got into that. And you need you need that you need access to that creativity to to bring just making lunch alive again, right? You know, just to get that inspiration for a few other ideas, and and so it can be fun and creative again. And instead of just thinking, no, I've just run out of ideas. I can't. You know, everyone's got something. <laughs> you know. But actually, in the next moment, yeah, you can if you're just open to it. You're like, okay, well, let's see what will happen, and, and something comes up. It does something comes up unless you're thinking oh god I can't bear this anymore <laughs> in which case it won't <laughs> right. Right. but it's really yeah I, I I love how that creative energy applies to every every moment whatever you're doing isn't it if you come from that space then yeah every moment can yeah. create something yeah it's the energy that creates something rather than the other way around. You know, we look into the, the, you know, well, if I, you know, like, let's say, you know, with these two ideas, right, well, I'm going to create something over here, you know, but it's actually coming from the energy that the creativity kind of flows from, I guess, more than, you know, it's, it's, we think about it the other way around. Well, I'll create something with this, you know, but it's actually the other way around. It's a freedom to kind of think, you know, yeah yeah how to it's kind of like where yeah sorry go on yeah no yeah it's, it's about how you're experiencing whatever you're creating yeah as opposed to the creation itself yeah so just saying it to you made me realize like that's why my initial reaction as you know shall continually reminds me my first reaction is always no you know and then once i settle and i get more creative you know, I get that feeling of creativity. It's like, okay, well, now where can we go with that? But it's coming from that feeling rather than the initial idea of, okay, let's create, uh, let's do a virtual event, you yeah. know? 
Yeah. So even my first reaction to everything, and my kids will tell you the same, is no, right? But it's like, okay, now, you know, it's the same thing with the sandwiches, no, you know, like, and my, the same as yesterday, tough, you know, but it's like, okay, now, okay, now, well, what's, you know, what, 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 what new possibilities are there now that you've got over yourself? I'm talking yeah. to myself, not to you. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. No, no, well, it's the same, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that I'm over myself, you know, kind of what, what, where, where does it, what, what's possible, you know? Mm. Well, and then I start just seeing, just following my nose, following that feeling, what makes sense, common sense, just, yeah, following that energy and seeing where it ends up. And that's how I ended up creating this whole template of just for the sake of it, which has, you know, kind of been very helpful for, you know, three or four three or four other conferences, you know? Um, and it's the same energy that I've actually kind of got on the go on something else. Someone else come up and said, well, how can we do this? And I'm like, forget it, not possible. And then it's like, okay, now what? Well, how, how would we do that? Oh, okay, let's try it like this. Mm. Um, mm. It's like saying no, sort of puts the brakes on. So then yeah. you've, got, yeah, like, yeah. Space. you've then got your space to, to, to have time to, to think about yeah. it. Yeah. I never used to do that. I always used to say no, and that was it. It was the end of the story. And and do you do you find you've got less controlling? I hope. So. Yeah. I mean, I have. Um, I know I have. Um, and yeah, definitely, I'm more trusting as well. I mean, I I feel like it's always it's one of those things that's a work in progress, and it kind of varies with, you know in the same way as feelings do generally. It's like, you know, sometimes you can be, I can be, you know, super controlling and, and sometimes be not, you know, just like, okay, let's see what happens. But um, it's, a, it's, it's not, a, when I say a work in progress, I also don't mean it's something that I work on because I don't work on that, but I just see more and more every day, you know, that there is, more success and good feeling and um the right things happen when i do let go more and trust and give and you know become less controlling as a result of, of all those things that is nice to hear that you you, you still fall into that from time to time <laughs> no, i definitely it's one of my old things and i definitely fall into that controlling things on yeah and i yeah i i it catches me it catches me yeah so but as you say, what can you do? Yeah. Well, you, you know, just, as long as you're you know, moving in the right It's direction. one of those things. It's just, you know, it's like lockdown. It's like we have to, we have to stay in, you know, I, 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 you know, so we just, you just adjust and you move on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. What I, what I love from hearing that and really make me um, think about my own expectations and um, like if, if we come in and we say well I, I created this new project this new company this new so that seems like we are moving forward at least for me now completely understanding like what Susie is saying from such a what seems so little like how to go around making now time or lunches uh, in a way that doesn't feel that I can't cope with life anymore so if Susie have come into this episode saying I have now created a new way of making sandwiches or the kids go and make sandwiches on their own is 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 free Wednesday. Go into the fridge, find your lunch, whatever. Um, it, it may not be perceived, or if I we have you know put that as our new project may have not been perceived as such an achievement. But thinking about it, if that's the point where we feel that we can't cope with life. Is that the thing that we can achieve to make life better, be at service for ourselves and for others? 
that's the most important project we can bring to life. I'm not going to believe that my main mission in life is making lunches for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but I hear what you're, it is actually a really beautiful thing you're saying. It is a really beautiful thing. <laughs> I will just swallow that and reflect on it. <laughs> but I think it's the broader point, isn't it, of parenting, you know, kind of rather than the specific form of, you know, sandwich making, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's relationships in a nutshell, isn't it? It's lovely. I guess it's not what you do, but how you do it. There you go. Absolutely. Well, I'm in Denmark. I'm not in the UK. So for me, the, the, we have a, we have some lockdowns, I guess, but not not as severely as over in your, in your country. And uh, so I'm sending lots of love to you. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's no, you know, I, 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 I I kind of feel like it's it's the we. I said the third one, but it all feels kind of much the same. I have to say the feeling is kind of the feeling rather than the than what you can do what you can't do um again it's kind of when you get too into the form you know you kind of lose yourself in yeah. in in all of that and and you know it's kind of i mean there's lots of cliches you know freedom is a state of mind and all of those types of things but it's like it's like okay what, what next you know let's see what happens next you know what can we what can we do what can we create what can you know where can we help them you know and be of service and give to others and and love and you know connect you know it's like that's that's the real opportunity here you know uh, i think all the big adventures uh, inventions uh, you know the renaissance and everything was after the plague you know it's yeah. It's, it's it's so so there's creativity going up i feel creativity music drawing every you know it's really been a wonderful year in that in that respect yeah. fantastic year you know when has that ever happened before that you could do so really be creative and and you, and without having to you know push it to some other time but you you suddenly you you've, you've You've got the time to do things more thoroughly or enjoyably yeah. or yeah. So yeah, exactly. I, I don't see the problem. Or, or getting married. Yeah, that's very really funny. Yeah, yeah. We got married. And, oh, congratulations. And it was really interesting because it is it, it just it just we managed to do it right at the right moment and 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 everything was so it was um, a truly uh, bl blissful event. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I have to go, but thank you, Julian. And uh, thank Joe. you, Chris. Thanks. I have to go too. I think. Yeah, I, I think. Well. Um, yeah. 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 You've been incredibly, incredibly nice and and uh given with your time thank you so much uh it's an absolute pleasure to have you here julian and um and something i don't know propelled 
Wayne and I to at some point start sending messages to Julia. We want to help. We want to help. We want to help. <laughs> so um, I think it was the right time and moment. And yes. um, thank you. So thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Count on us for anything uh, that you may think of. Uh, so see if we can. Uh, I don't know. Give you recipes for sandwiches or. <laughs> <laughs> We'll ask people to volunteer, you know, on the thread. So keep an eye. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Um. <laughs> it was just an example. It's okay. I, I, it's not my biggest problem. It's fine. It's fine. It's not a problem at all. In fact, <laughs> it was just. It's just the approach applies to everything in life. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. Yeah. But I'm very grateful. It's very lovely to to, to hear you, Julian, and and everyone. Thank you for sharing, Susie and Savia. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so uh, we'll we'll see you next week. Uh, next week we are having Chris. No, no, not Chris. Alfie. Alfie. Sorry. Chambers. Yeah. Alfie Chambers, and uh, we're going to have a conversation about uh, him having a new life after. Uh, spending some time in, in prison and then finding this understanding and uh, what's, what's happened after that. So what he's seen now um, was come to life for him. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a fantastic episode for sure. And so thank you again to everybody. And thank you, Wayne. Thank you. I love you so much. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you next week. And um, thank you for being here. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>